In the previous podcast, we talked about standard deviation and the idea of three sigma events. So, how exactly do we measure standard deviation? This podcast is going to show you the basic and very simple maths behind the calculation. In most cases, we determine the mean and the standard deviation for a sample. What do we mean by this? Suppose we wanted to find the mean of the weight of 30-year-old men in the United Kingdom and to look at the standard deviation. Well, we could measure the weight of every single 30-year-old male, but this would prove to be a rather laborious task. Instead, we take a sample of the population and determine the mean for the sample. There is a small difference in the calculations for standard deviation between using whole populations and samples. And for this podcast, and for most of our work on climate, we shall be using samples. Our first sample, as you can see here, is for temperature. We have a range stated, what is being measured, and where and when it was being measured. So, here are the data we're going to use. The highest temperatures in June over a period of 10 years. You can see that there are differences of a few degrees between each year and that they vary between, what, 26 degrees Celsius and the lowest one there is 20 degrees Celsius. So the first step is to determine the mean, which is done by finding the sum of all the temperatures and then dividing by the number of years. And the answer here is 23 degrees. In some articles you may find the mean referred to as the average. Now, as long as it's calculated in this way, then we are talking about the same thing. Our next step is to subtract the mean from each year's reading, and then to square the difference. Note that by squaring the difference, all our answers here are going to be positive. Now we work out the mean of the differences. Here, we sum all the differences, but now, because we are using the sample procedure, we divide this by n minus 1. So although we've got 10 events, we're going to subtract 1, that gives us 9. So that gives us a mean of the differences of 3.33. This little n minus 1 part is often referred to in texts as Bessel's correction. Now we shall take the square root of the mean of the differences. In other words, find the square root of 3.33. This gives an answer of 1.83, and that is our standard deviation. Now I can calculate my 1 sigma, 2 sigma, and 3 sigma values, and you can easily see how these are determined. The 1 sigma is the standard deviation, so 2 sigma would be twice this value and 3 sigma is 3 times the value of 1 sigma so 3.65 is 2 times 1.83 and 5.48 is 3 times 1.83 now our mean temperature was 23 degrees celsius so I can now make a further column and what I'm going to show is the difference from the mean for each of the years that temperature measurements was made. So if the mean was 23 and in the first year it was 22 was the actual temperature, then the difference from the mean is 1. Right, my next column then shows how many of these differences from the mean fall into the 1 sigma range. In other words, if they are within the range of 1.83 and those that are outside of that range are indicated by red. Now the red means then that the difference from the mean is higher than one standard deviation or the others are within one standard deviation. So those that were in red fall into the two sigma range. We haven't actually got any three sigma events on this one. Okay, so the presentation of data in terms of 1 sigma, 2 sigma and 3 sigma events is very important when we are looking at how fast climate change is occurring. There will always be a few skeptics who try and argue some changes are not occurring. Now when this happens, look at how they selected a sample and what they compared to the sample to. 
In our example, the last three years show a fall in high the highest temperature recorded. So, does that mean that cooling's taken place? To be certain we are looking at results sensibly, we probably need larger samples than 10 years, maybe 100 years will be needed. However, if the mean temperature is changing over time, then we do need to make more calculations, perhaps looking at the means for several decades to see if there's a trend. There are also more visual ways of presenting the results, and we will look at those in the next podcast. So this ends this short podcast. Thank you for watching and for listening. For more information, you can find Parkbench Tutors on Facebook or look us up at parkbenchtutors.com.